as you've probably guessed, the OnePlus 8T is largely based on the OnePlus 8, so it's almost just as light and compact. The 8T carries the same Qualcomm Snapdragon 865 processor, a 6.55 inch Full HD Plus AMOLED display, but the latter has a couple of subtle differences. This actually makes it easier to watch videos or play games on the phone, and it's also less prone to accidental tabs along the edges. Another change here is that the refresh rate has been bumped up from 90Hz to 120Hz, matching that of the OnePlus 8 Pro. This makes scrolling on the already slick Oxygen OS even more effortless. The changes are more obvious on the back of the phone. What used to be OnePlus's iconic camera column in the middle is now just a rectangular island placed at the top left corner. This aquamarine green glossy finish that mimics ceramic glazing. OnePlus claims that this coating can render fingerprints almost invisible using optical tricks, but I find that it only works well if you look directly at the surface. Photography, it's the same 48 megapixel main camera as the OnePlus 8 here, which isn't the best in class, especially with its dynamic range in low light conditions. Likewise, the 16 megapixel punch hole selfie camera suffers from washed out colors, but we already saw that on the 8 Pro. Luckily, the 8T makes up with a brand new 16 megapixel ultra wide camera and a new 5 megapixel macro camera, both of which performed surprisingly well. The remaining changes are mostly on the inside. Thanks to the new flat screen, OnePlus was able to increase the battery size to 4500 mAh, which is about the same as the 8 Pros. This gives me around 13. Speaking of which, OnePlus is finally able to offer the 65 watt version of dash charge, meaning you can go for minutes. I've actually used this tech on Oppo and Realme phones before. They are cross compatible and trust me, it's hard to go back once you are accustomed to this rapid charging speed. As for software, the AT is the first OnePlus phone to ship with Oxygen OS 11, which is based on Android 11, duh. The general interface is pretty much the same as before. It's just as clean as slick, which is the way I like it. And I haven't seen any bugs so far. Even the in-display fingerprint reader performed reliably on the get-go. Now, there are some new features, with my favorite one being the Insight Always On display, which is a collaboration between OnePlus and Parsons School of Design to visualize a user's digital well being in a stylish manner. And each time you unlock the phone, you create a gap on the bar, so it's basically shaming you for ruining this otherwise beautiful piece of artwork. If you do want to do something about your mobile addiction, there's Zen Mode 2.0, which offers a new group Zen Mode so that you can encourage your friends to also lock themselves out of their phones at, say, dinner parties or just regular meetings. All they have to do is to install the Zen Mode app, which is now available to non OnePlus phones. Say you want to instantly share the photo you just took, so simply long press the thumbnail at the bottom right and this will bring up a quick share dial, then you just drag. This should save you a few taps, though I wish I'll be able to customize these shortcuts in the future so that I can quickly edit photos from there. Interesting. The OnePlus 8T will be headed to the US with just a single model, featuring 12 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. This is asking for $750, which is a little more than the Galaxy S20 FE, but you are getting twice as much RAM and storage, not to mention the awesome 65 watt fast charging as well. If you have any other thoughts about the OnePlus 8T, feel free to leave a comment 